Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Coffee with Jeff and Bedros. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started with our weekend review. And uh, Bedros had quite the week this week, I heard. I did. Uh, we'd like to start it off before even asking you how it went with a nice video, because you kind of already told us a little bit of how it went. Yeah. And, um, hey, what's up, Pedro's Kuvian here so in beautiful Doheny, Chanta. What, what happened right now? What happened as we were in the water? A 10 foot shark advisor said, fucking get the fuck out of the water. <laughs> I don't even know that guy. <laughs> we were just surfing in the water here in Dana Point, and, uh, and, and there, was a, there was two horns that blew, and all of a sudden, hey, everyone get out of the water. We just saw a shark in the shallows. So uh, we made it out alive, so did everybody else. <laughs> We look shook. We live to serve another day. The adrenaline pumping. <laughs> Dude, I gotta tell you, I've, I've, uh... <laughs> How do we stop it? Yeah. What happened? How do we stop there it? There we go. <laughs> so, so, so we're in the water, and it's like, what was it, Saturday, right? Yeah. It was Saturday, I evening. Know, 5.30 yeah. in the evening. Which, when I think about it now, when do animals go out to eat? Dusk. Dusk, right? That's why people are supposed to go, you go fishing either early on in the morning or at dusk. And so it's like 5.30, the sun's starting to, you know, kind of starting to set, and all of a sudden the, the horn starts blowing, and the lifeguards get on the mic, and they're like, shark in the shallows, we advise you to paddle in. Everyone, first of all, is like, no, that didn't just happen. <laughs> then they do it again, and everybody turns around and just group paddle all the way in. And there like, like three guys that decided yeah, not to come in. Yeah, three or four guys stayed. In fact, one guy was like, oh, man, that sucks, bro. I was like, dude, you're in the shark's house. Just get the fuck out of the water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was a pretty interesting, uh, interesting time. Two weeks in a row, sharks. So uh, you're finally getting back into surfing, and the last three times you've had some kind of incident from right. a stingray, stingray sting, which I've never seen a stingray at Doheny because of all the rocks. So I don't know how that happened. Yeah. A shark that was caught right beside you on the jetty. Yeah, four and a half foot shark. And then a shark in the shallows. Yeah. You know what the common so. denominator is though? Doheny. Chanta. <laughs> Every time Chanta was with me. That, yeah. I'm telling you, it's that guy. If, if he's watching, Chanta, if you're watching right now, you're bad luck, bro. So, and uh, I'm just going with you from now on. So since you only got to surf for what, like 30 minutes? You didn't just drive all the way down there for that, did you? What did Dude, you guys, if, if you guys were all pumped up, had some adrenaline going. What did you guys decide to do after that to go like work off that adrenaline? Well, we had to calm the nerves. It was only the right thing to do. And so we figured we'd uh, go shower up. And um, we ended up going to a so local... So you went back to his place to take a shower? Yeah, yeah, Chanta's place. He's got a very tiny shower. So we both, it was kind of tight fit for the both of us, but we managed. Um, and, then, and then we went to a place called Opa right by his house. Nice little bar, you know, appetizers and so on. That was a pretty entertaining scene. After a few beers and some Oscar mules, the nerves were calm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, we were good. And then you just went home after that? Uh, at, some, <laughs> at some point that night, we went home after, after, after maybe ending up at a different place um, that had a rainbow flag and a lot of men and alcohol. Nice. And <laughs> it wasn't where your, you know, your old place of employment like to welcomed no, you back in, no, no. VIP service and everything? No, man. If, so <laughs> we, ended, we somehow ended up, somehow, <laughs> by choice, we ended up at a, <laughs> this, this story is going to take a weird twist, but by choice, we met someone at the bar next to us. There was like this couple, and they were talking about they're going to go out, et cetera. And we couldn't tell like if they were husband and wife or they were just friends and maybe he, the other guy was the gay friend. <laughs> And so before you know it, they're talking about a nice gay club. And I said, well, hey, I used to be a, a bouncer at a gay club back in the day. And before you know it, um, we're on our way to a gay club. <laughs> so, you knew, so you knew it was a gay club before you got oh, there? Oh, yeah. Chanta was like chomping at the bits. He's like, bro, call that Uber XL. I said, all right, I'll do it if you want me to. See, I heard that, you know, he just, you know, whatever the name of the bar was, uh -huh. it was in Laguna. He, he knows every bar in Laguna, but he never heard of this one before. Mm -hmm. If you just um, Google Manhole Laguna, you'll, you'll find it. Yeah. I mean, What's the harm of going to a gay club? You're probably not going to know anybody there anyway, right? Like, what's the chances of running into somebody that you would know? What are the chances? Because the chances were 100%. So, so who do we run into? But Chanta's ex-wife with a group of gay dudes who were the funnest cats to hang out with. And so we ended up having some drinks and stuff with them. And then... Uh, but she hasn't seen you in a while, so did she like think you guys were like there together, like because of the bar? Yeah. Or? So we had to have a weird <laughs> side conversation. She's like, "Hey, come here, Psst, I got to talk to you." I'm like, "What about? What about? I'm trying to dance, you know?" And um, she's like, "Are you guys together?" I said, "No, no, no, no. He's he's. We we just came to the gay bar. We're exploring the lifestyle. Yeah. I didn't say we're we're committed. We're just exploring. Nice. Yeah. yeah I heard you left a little early and left him there to you know explore, yeah, well, explore some more. He was making a lot of friends, and I figured I'd give him all the room he needs. And so I had to wake up early to write my book the next morning, and so I left um, 
and of course the Uber guy picked me up and he goes, oh, is that a nice club? I go, yeah, it's a nice club. You ought to try it. He goes, no, it's not my kind of thing. I go, listen, it's not my thing either, but it's great music, fun people, awesome bar. So I think I convinced the guy to go try it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, he made it surfing the next day. I don't know how. He had, it was actually my sixth day in a row yesterday, and then today was my seventh day in a row. Dude. And it's, the swell's coming in. Waves are getting pretty big, five to seven feet. Yeah, where'd you and, guys go uh, surfing? Went to Salt Creek yesterday and today. Salt Creek. So that's bigger and faster waves than Dana Point, where I surf. And no sharks. And no sharks. But what happened to you? Because I heard that uh, you might have caught a wave, but uh, you were yes, underwater. Yeah, yesterday it took a pretty good spill. Wave closed out on me. Felt like I was under for like 20 seconds. Shanta said more like five, but when you're under there, you know, getting tossed around and drugged ashore, it feels five seconds feels like 20 seconds or more. You, you know why? Because people don't understand that, like, when you're gonna hold your breath, like in your pool, and go under, you could go, <gasps> you get a. But when relax. you're about to eat it, <laughs> and you know you can come up whenever you want to. Yeah, when you're about to eat it, no one tells you that you're about to eat it. You just eat it, and if you were just exhaling, then that's it. It's whatever little. This is one of those ones like I got up and I was like stuck on the top, and I was trying to go back off the back, but there was no going back. Yeah, it just no back. <laughs> like straight down into the abyss. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Did you catch so. Any, though? Oh yeah, I caught some good ones yesterday. Good yeah, man. and then uh, today. Paddled out for the seventh day in a row. I thought it was a good idea. All right. And I uh, caught one right away, but I was really tired trying to paddle out. So I just bought a new drone a couple weeks ago. So I decided to take it out and got some pretty cool oh, is this footage drone, from the drone footage. Yeah. So it's not bad for my first time. Looks like Shanta, but it wasn't him. Yeah. <laughs> He's, that guy is goofy. Shanta's a regular foot. That's cool, man. So how far out does a drone go before it loses? So this drone goes out 4.7 miles. Before it loses connection? Yeah. Oh, so you're good. It won't let you get that far. Once it gets, once you lose it, you can just like hit a button and it comes back it comes to you. Back. It's kind of right. cool. That's really sweet, man. Wow. Good job. Awesome. Were so, you controlling um, that? that was yeah, I was controlling that, yeah, because sure. uh, Shanta didn't make it today, but uh, Ahmed was out there. I kept trying to find him, but he was, there was too many people, so I got everybody but him yeah. surfing. Huh. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I paddled out. was like, my shoulders are just done, so I came in and grabbed it. And, playing around with it until this guy came over and told me that I should go like hide in the bushes while I'm flying it because you get a ticket. <laughs> I guess they don't want like 50 drones at the beach unless you have a commercial license. So if right. it's at like a, like a park or at any like public place, you have to have a commercial license or permit. So you got to get a permit if, if they allow it. And then most places now, if there's any kind of airport near it, even like a small municipal airport, is a no-fly zone. Yeah. Which Airport, really makes any kind of like useless. accidents. You know, if they need to like fly a like, helicopter and yeah. to airlift somebody out or fi like fires yeah. and that. Mm -hmm. I remember last year you were coming back from uh, Orange County and there was like all the, like, the tumbleweeds were burning or blowing yeah. across the highway. <laughs> That's right. People were like grabbing their drones out of their trunks trying to get like news that footage. Nuts. You know what I just saw today actually at the gym um, on, the, on the big TV screens? They had, you know, normally when they show drone footage, it's black and white and it's really <laughs> vague. Dude, this had to be like a small actual drone of Iraq, I think it was Mosul. Um, I think now ISIS is no longer in Mosul or whatever, but they showed literally like plumes of smoke coming out. It was so clear, and you could tell it was a low flying drone. It was a pretty sweet shot. Yeah, I've never cool. seen that before. Yeah, this is like shoots in 4K. It's pretty, uh, it's yeah. pretty cool. I saw one uh, video from 4th of July. A guy was flying his drone in between all the fireworks, and there's like, <laughs> like right in front of the drone. It was pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. That is sweet. So you still, um, I know you've been working on your book. Mm -hmm. um, have you hit the halfway point yet, or where are you with your book? I think I'm past the halfway point. I just crossed uh, 31,000 words uh, this morning. Um, I have a feeling the book will end up wrapping up at around 45,000 words. So what am I, 14,000 words away? Nice. Uh, and it's not a matter of words. Like It's just a matter of getting the message getting across without a lot of fluff or words. But it's pretty cool to be able to, uh, I told you what I use, right? The, the dragon. Yep. Uh, speak and type. And then the beer and the nuts. Yes, yeah, yeah. and the beer in my nuts, uh, and that's a, always a great combination. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So when you're writing a book, do you like uh, edit as you go? Do you like type back up, type again, and like, or do you just like get it out of your head and get it all out there and then go back later and take away? So the first thousand words where I was about to just go and jump off a cliff <laughs> were type, back up, correct, type, back up, correct, and I realized this isn't going to work. I'm never going to get done. So I... Um, did a Google search. What, <laughs> look, by the way, public service announcement to the world, the answer to everything is on Google. <laughs> and uh, you just need to do a good Google search. And so I said, you know, the, the most effective or the either effective or efficient way to write a book. And it was like, hey, dragon, and then make your outline, ask yourself these three questions per chapter, and then just answer the questions by speaking, and then go back and fix it later. So easy. That nice. one process alone made me not want to kill myself. 
I'm like a couple years out, so I'll wait till you get to like your second and third one, because then you're gonna have a lot better tips. Yes. You know, so I'll be good to go yes, by then. I'll just send you my outward. <laughs> awesome. What about you? What do you got going on? So I just uh, relaunched my inner circle coaching program oh, over the weekend. Wow. Got about five new people coming on board. Got it. How so, does that work? Uh, Tell me about it. So it's just like a, a online mastermind slash coaching program. Uh, we do one like hot seat. We do like a Zoom meeting once a month and um, solve like your hardest or your biggest issue in your business, biggest stumbling block. You get to sit on with about six, seven other people and see what their issues and problems are. Just mm -hmm. like we do in, in uh, real life with our, with our high level masterminds, uh, we're doing online through Zoom. Um, but they also get front of line service through the agency. They get discounts to all of our events. Um, they nice. get uh, fit clients. They get fitness marketer lab. So a lot of a lot of benefits there. Did and they you get say you got five people to sign up. Yeah, over the weekend. Yep. Um, was that your best email that you sent so far? Um, so far, yeah. I mean, we just redid the site, redid the video. Um, the last time, for whatever reason, the site didn't and the video didn't convert. Yeah. Um, so I think this is converting a lot better. Well, um, not to be talking business <laughs> on here, but send me that email. Sure. And I'll mail out for it. And I'll use the email as a lesson on how to craft emails that convert. Perfect. And then we'll see if we can get more people to convert onto the program as well. Awesome. So we were just talking about, you know, trying to hold your breath when you crash on a wave. And um, it does help to train outside, uh, you know, in a more uh, controlled environment. And I heard you set a new record or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> you know, my daughter, Chloe, her and I were in the pool on probably Sunday? <laughs> yeah, there, there I am, there's me with the gold medal. We were in the pool on Sunday, and she's like, hey daddy, how long can you hold your breath? And the first time I did it, it was like 38 seconds, and I was like, man, I know I could do better than this. And then she did it, and she held it for like 35 seconds. I'm like, this, this, can't, be, this can't be right. I, I, I gotta beat a little nine-year-old. And so, again, I did a quick Google search on what's the most effective way to dunk your head underwater and hold your breath. Sure enough, this video came, came up of a Navy SEAL in a pool holding his breath for three minutes. And <coughs> it just kind of outlines the process. I did it, went under, and I said, hey, Chloe, just tap me on the shoulder when it's 60 seconds. And she tapped me, and I probably could have gone another three, four seconds. Nice. Yeah, yeah, everything has a process, man. That's cool. Yeah, I was at a, a Brendan Bouchard event maybe five years ago now, and I met this guy, uh, this is his name, uh, Stig, St Stig Severson. Yeah. And uh, he has a record of uh, you know the longest free dive, Longest breath hold, guess how many minutes he can hold his breath. Holy smokes. Well, I think I remember reading somewhere that seven minutes you get your brain starts to crap out. So I'm guessing five? 22 minutes. Whoa! <laughs> Wait, for real? Yeah. So there's you all kinds of- die and then they resuscitate <laughs> them? <laughs> 22 pretty minutes later? Pretty much. No, so there's a lot of tricks and stuff that you can do to increase um, the amount of time that you can hold your breath. I think uh, Tim Ferriss did an experiment. He was able to get up for like four and a half minutes. Dang. And um, it all has to do with like low carb diet or even the ketogen ketogenic diet will help you be able to uh, hold your breath longer. Okay. So um, we're talking prepping days in advance now. And maybe not, even weeks, not, yeah. Maybe weeks, not just, hey, check me out, here I go. Yeah. Wow, that is pretty badass. So, 22 yeah. minutes. Is that a world record, you know? It is a world record, is. yeah. Okay. I think the longest I've ever done is about a minute and a half. So yeah. I don't think if Tim Ferriss can get the four and a half, I should be able to get at least three minutes, but yeah. it's, uh, start panicking after like a minute just because it's not normal. I'm just looking at my watch underwater like, the more I look at it, the harder it is to yeah, yeah, keep holding it. About that, yeah. That's why I was like, hey, Chloe, just tap me. Because the more I started counting in my head, the worse it got. So like, I'm not going to count. I'm just going to zone out. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So next up is the current events. And uh, we have some really cool, uh, interesting, trending uh, topics and articles that we found this week. So <laughs> this the first crazy. one is about a girl, friend, boyfriend. They have a kid together, and she's pregnant, one on the way. They have a YouTube channel. They're trying to get you know, more users, more subscribers, and sure. they're willing to do pretty much anything to get them. Um, he convinces her that it's a good idea to shoot a book that he's holding in front of his chest and that the bullet won't go through the book. He even showed her a book that he had done it to earlier that the bullet didn't go through. Mm. Guess what kind of gun she decides to shoot him with from a foot away? <laughs> now, you would think it would probably be like a 22 caliber, or maybe if you're going to live on the edge, it would be like a 9 millimeter. <laughs> Yeah, a 50 caliber Desert Eagle. <laughs> 50, that's a hand cannon. For yeah. those that don't know, a I 50 mean, caliber Desert Eagle. It's pretty much going to hit you in the forehead when you pull the trigger. I've seen so many people with marks on their forehead from shooting you wow. know, a 50 cal. Wow. I'm surprised she didn't miss the book altogether just from it going right. up. Yeah, just but, scalping uh, the guy instead. Yeah, so I'm guessing he died. Yes, he, he died. She's facing uh, 10 years or $20,000 know, fine, which I don't understand how 20000 is worth 10 years, but hmm. um, 
Wait, wait, she can swap out the 10,000? No, I think it's probably both, but oh. I, 10 years doesn't seem like, 20,000 doesn't seem like nowhere near oh, yeah. the same kind of punishment as, uh, as 10 years, but. So when I, when I read <laughs> about this, and we were talking about it earlier in the prep, I thought that they should create a whole new jail for people <laughs> that do stupid shit on social media, right? And it should be called stupid jail. Because if you've done stupid stuff like where, oh, I don't know, you try and shoot your husband <laughs> who's holding a book, uh, you shouldn't go to regular jail. It should be stupid jail. And then people like us should be able to just come through oh, through the gates and just slap you across <laughs> the face randomly and say you're an idiot and then go back home. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah. And wow. uh, we, you know, people would learn all kinds of lessons of what not to do. Or you end up in stupid jail, and then when we're feeling stressed out, just go slap them around a little mm -hmm. bit, and everything will be great in the world. Now, now what about some current events about cryptocurrency because I know you're up to date on all this stuff and now I'm starting to I'm gonna pick your mind about investing in cryptocurrency what do you what do you what do you know about that cool so yeah I just went to an event about a month ago in LA about uh, cryptocurrency blockchain technology um, you know virtual reality all that good stuff so uh, cryptocurrency or blockchain is definitely you know what the future is going to be when it comes to uh, smart contracts or uh, just storing your uh, your money or your, your finances. It's much more secure. It's decentralized. You know, it's going to get rid of the need for banks. Yeah. And um, the other thing is that they're even building like social sites on the blockchain, and you actually get paid for spending your time because your time is valuable on their site. So sites like Google and Facebook, you know, Google pretty much steals all of your content, puts it on their server, and then makes billions of dollars off of your content. Facebook, you're in there and you're liking and you're posting videos. Yep. You don't get paid for that, and they're making billions of dollars. So on their site, it's called Steemit. Um, it's a new social site that's built on a blockchain. And when you submit your uh, your content, your articles, your pictures, videos, people can what they they call it upvoting, but just like liking. And the more likes you get, the more money you make. So the person who contributed gets paid the most, but you also get paid for liking as well. You know, a little bit. So for those that don't know and they're watching, what is cryptocurrency? So cryptocurrency is you know, just you know, uh, encryption, an, an encrypted data that keeps like a ledger. It's like an open ledger. So everything is open source. You can download the entire blockchain, and that's what makes it secure. So in order, once the people build the blockchain technology, there has to be at least two computers that sync up somewhere in the world in order for the network to go live. And once that network goes live, it's open source. So I could download the entire blockchain, every transaction that's ever occurred from the time it started onto my computer. And as long as everything matches up, all three sync, then the network can keep going on. And, and then people all over the world are downloading. So there's probably like three to 5,000, they call them miners. I think Jackie's husband even mines Bitcoin. Huh. Um, and uh, if, one, like if, you're, if your computer, if you try to hack into it or change anything, it doesn't match up with all the other 3,000, the network kicks you out instantly. So, so really, there's no way to create fake like right now, we can we can create fake money, right? We can yeah. create fake money. There's no way to create fake cryptocurrency, digital money. No, so with Bitcoin, there was like 20 million issued to start, and that's all that will ever be created. And now there's only about 16,000 that are being traded because you have, when you store your cryptocurrency, store it in like an offline in a wallet, and you have like this key, it's a private key. So if something were to happen, like you get a different computer, you need that key in order to open up the wallet. And if you lose that key, then it's you know lost and it's sure. encrypted forever. All right, so for those who don't know, here's Google's uh, uh, definition of cryptocurrency. A digital currency in which encryption techniques are used to regulate the generation of units of currency and verify the transfer of funds and operating in independently on a central bank. So really, there could be a whole network of people that decide, hey, um, you're a copywriter. Um, I need copywritten. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm not going to pay with cash. I'm going to pay with bitcoins. Mm -hmm. And I pay you with bitcoins, and then there's another person in the network that sells whatever tires for your truck, and you're gonna go buy tires for your truck not with cash but with bitcoins. And really, this the, the whole new it's like this whole new economy that is created. Is that right? Correct. That and is nuts, isn't it, folks? Wow. And the reason that the value goes up is one from the miners. You know, it costs money and time for them to download everything and making sure that the ne that the network is secure, and that's what gives it its value. But then it's also people trading it. So if I trade, people will trade their Bitcoin for a certain amount of money and, or, a certain, or some other kind of currency, just like the stock market trades. You can trade, uh, they call them altcoins, there's probably like mm. a couple, few hundred of them now besides Bitcoin. London, uh, can you, when on your free time, which I know you have a lot of, um, <laughs> can you, but seriously, can you Google some Laguna Beach gay clubs 
that Chanta can visit <laughs> while using Bitcoins, that accept Bitcoins. Okay. Yeah, because I know he's invested. Isn't he invested? Yeah, because the other thing is that it's anonymous. Right. So it's perfect you want, for you know, Chanta. Because we haven't said anything about him right. you know, publicly. Right. So as long and as we're he, not sure his as long name as Chanta. he doesn't use his credit card, he just gets in with Bitcoin. That's it. You know, it nobody would yeah. ever know. So <laughs> <laughs> he invested in uh, BitShares and Karma Coin. That's and, right. Uh, okay, so the, the, the gay clubs have to accept <laughs> BitShares and Karma Coin, not, not Bitcoins. Because like yeah. bitcoins are worth about twenty five hundred dollars right now for one. Holy so th the upside for those aren't as much unless it gets to like thirty to fifty thousand a piece. Whereas with BitShares, it's like fifteen to twenty cents right now. But it has it solved a lot of problems that Bitcoin has. So it has the ability to scale a lot faster. Yeah. So if it goes from fifteen or twenty cents to five to ten dollars, you can make a lot of money. That's but, interesting. Um, but the interesting thing is, you know, like especially with social, how um, you actually get paid for spending your time on there. There's some guys on there making seven hundred fifty dollars a day. Dang. You know, just posting content. I mean, I they know, have a lot right of now followers. People and googling and bitcoins and, <laughs> and, and social currencies. Yeah. You're getting yeah. lots of likes on it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And you know what's funny is for for people who are under the impression that this is for those who are like the preppers or that are paranoid about the government. Like I know some, like Matt Smith, who who you know you know you know Matt mm -hmm. Smith, uh, Craig Ballantyne's business partner. I mean, the guy was uh, CEO of uh, of Agora and a uh, giant, giant publishing company. Like, so many great people who are leaders in business have invested in cryptocurrency because it is becoming the new economy. It's not to say that it might replace the new economy. I think people are a little paranoid about it replacing the current economy. It may one day, but it's not just for the paranoid. Yeah. Now, I mean, I think there's already countries that are adopting uh, cryptocurrency. I know China and Russia are looking into like Litecoin, using Litecoin. Yeah. Um, hmm. But uh, it's definitely, you know, not a matter of if, but just when it becomes more, you know, more mainstream. For sure. Fitbodybitcoin.com. Fit 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I'm gonna go yeah. get fitbodycoin.com and sell it to you later when you're ready to start to start using it. Right. But, True um, enough. But By the way, where technology is concerned, what happened with Tesla? Because I know Elon Musk is hell bent on getting cars to drive, and he's got the technology. Mm -hmm. It's just the government hasn't caught yeah, up he, with it. I mean, he's already stated that his cars are already safer than the average driver. Yeah. But um, there was a uh, their first fatal crash Ooh. in Florida, uh, I guess almost two weeks ago now. Yeah. But um, he said that when you enable the self-driving part of the car, there's a little box you have to tick that you assume all risk and responsibility and that it's still in test, you know, they're still in testing. And that you also agree to keep your hands on the wheel and stay alert at all times. And this guy who was driving, he had totally had his hands off the wheel. And uh, I guess a tractor trailer pulled out in front of him um, with the sun shining. It was a white trailer. The sensors didn't, didn't pick it up and didn't break. And he didn't break either. Holy smokes. So, all right. So there's still some uh, glitches that need to be worked out here. Yeah. For me, unless they're all self-driving, I don't want to rely on you know, the self-driving car versus everybody else mm. on their own. <laughs> But if they're all self-driving and they're all like linked together with their sensors and stuff, then I might be okay with it. Wow. You know what? I like the idea of self-driving cars. I don't like the idea of just suddenly dying. And so, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm with you. I'm going I'm to wait and let everybody else test it out. For now, I, I mean, chauffeur, you know, much, yeah. much better choice. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I've got a chauffeur, <laughs> 55 bucks an hour, yeah. and it uh, seems to work really fine. You just get the chauffeur to come drive you around whenever you want. Cool. So next up is our problem solver game. And I'll go ahead and get started, and mm -hmm. I have a problem for you to solve. So let's just assume, well, everything is going great in your life. You're highly successful. You have a good work-lifestyle balance. Let's just say that a huge opportunity came up. Say Elon Musk wants to partner with you on you know, something as big as SpaceX that's going to be revolutionary. It could change the world. Um, but you'd have to sacrifice your lifestyle. You know, you've got to put everything in it for the next... 10 years, but you'd be like A-list celebrity, you go down in the history books of inventing or creating this thing, what would you do? I wouldn't do it for the sake of A-list celebrity, but you, you hooked me when you said changing the world and impact. Like that's my big significance. And so I would, I would jump on board with it. I, I would commit the 10 years. I'm gonna work the next 10 years and the 10 years after that and the next 10 years after that on all big things anyway, because I've got this massive impact I wanna make. Um, yeah, that'd be cool, man. And even at the sacrifice of family and friends, and well, I mean, be, to say you'd be isolated and, and would have to—I mean, you'd have to give up 95% of that. Can you 
could you make up for the 95% in that other 5%? No, maybe not family. Maybe, maybe, and I, I guess I'd have to be like, hey, Elon, how much am I giving up on the, where the family is concerned? Because I think he's given up, and I respect him, and I've read his biography. Steve Jobs is the same way. Yeah. You know, like they, They've given they've up. They've changed the, you know, the and way. And that's a decision they made, but that, where family is concerned, I don't know if I can give up as much as they have. Yeah. yeah. So I'd have to, you know, there's an old asterisk for me. It's a yes with an asterisk. Yeah. What if it was like cure for cancer? And you had it, you just had to... I, I would do it. <laughs> it would. My family would have to sacrifice for the greater good. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, that's a good question. All right, I've got one for you. All right, so you've got a great employee. I mean, like a unicorn of an employee. two right here. Yeah, two right here, <laughs> right? And they deliver amazing work, but not to say that these two would ever do that. Uh, they're maybe a couple minutes late every other day or so. They leave trash laying around. What do you do? So stuff like two to three minutes late, it's like you always say, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So I, I would just have to sit down with them and give them the how you do one thing is how you do everything uh, pep, you know, prep talk. I would also future pace them and, and let them know like, hey, you, you do excellent work, but everybody else looks up to you and they see you doing this. And if you're coming in two, three minutes late, they assume that's the norm and they start coming in two, three minutes late. You know, there's lots of opportunity for you to grow in this company, but I need you to be a leader and set the example. Um, you're already doing that with your work, but it's these little things that you don't might not think matter, but they do. Not, you know, if it was just you and me and we didn't have any other employees, it wouldn't be a big deal. But other people look up to you and, you know, I would talk to them like that and, uh, and see, what, see what happens. That's fair. So let's say I'm going to, can I, can I follow up on this? Sure. All right. Let's say they go, all right, boss. And then they continue to show up late again a week later and leave shit laying around. But they're doing excellent at the things that there is within their zone of genius. I mean, are, are they like the best in the world at their zone of genius? They're doing excellent. They're not the best. There are other excellent people that could probably do that. For the same price, same everything? I imagine so, yeah. Then I'd go find them. Fair enough. Um, if they were the best and they couldn't be really re be replaced, I would probably just give them the opportunity to maybe just let them work from home <laughs> if they could. And sure. that way other, they're not affecting everybody else negatively because somebody else, something like that will set the precedence and everybody else will you know, either resent that they have to pick up this person's trash or resent that they are coming late and don't get, don't, you know, don't get in trouble for it. So I wouldn't let them affect everybody else. So I would just remove them from the environment, but still keep their services, maybe freelance or maybe let them work at home, something like that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Awesome. So let's say I have my first boot camp location and it's doing really, really good and I'm all excited. I want to start a second one. And I start the second one, starts off a little bit slower, but I'm not, I'm not too discouraged yet. And then the opportunity comes to get the third one. I get a third one right away, maybe a couple months later. Third one like takes off. And my first location, third location are doing really, really good. Second location, not so much. And I'm like, same offers, same low barrier offers, same, you know, everything. And for what I, no matter what I try in that second location, it just won't catch up to the other two. What do I do? Do I put more resources into that one or do I focus on the two that are oh, growing man. fast? That's a good question. And I'm going to take a quote from Stephen King. And he says, kill your darlings. So oftentimes, if we're opening up businesses, we might be in a position where it's like, well, this is location one, that's location two, that's location three. They're all my babies, right? Mm -hmm. Like anyone who's ever opened up a business or is an entrepreneur, you know that. Like they're all your babies. But when you look at what Stephen King said about writing novels, and he says, kill your darlings. In other words, the adjectives that you don't need that are still going to get the point across mm -hmm. in the, when someone reads your book. And so if you got location one and three firing on all cylinders and your goal is just to make money and make a bigger impact, well, location two is hindering that. So kill that darling, go open up a second, second location, and maybe that is opened up in a better spot. I mean, you got five employees there that depend on you. They, you know, they have kids. They, you know, they're great people. They worked with you for over a year. What do you do with them? You know, I'm writing about that in my book right now. You do what's best for the business first. You always do what's best for the business first because if you don't, then the other two might suffer and now all three are going to tank, and now you got 15 employees instead of just five suffering. Awesome, so this wasn't really a hypothetical, but there's more than one person that's watching that you're gonna answer that for them, and we know, we, we, yeah. we know a couple of them. Yeah. Um, so, that, so that's good, then that's definitely what, what I would have done. And I've seen you do it with a lot of your products and projects. Mm -hmm. um, remember the, the physical newsletter that you yeah. had, it's $97 uh, fit, fitness a marketing, month. Freak, fitness manifesto. marketing manifesto. Yeah. Um, I, I shut down because it was exactly that. It was making 15 grand a month, but it was taking so much effort and anxiety to produce it. High tech trainer, same thing. Um, so you got to kill your darlings to really pay more attention to the ones that are, you know, thriving. So awesome. I've got, I've got one for you, right? Like you don't, 
you don't have that position yet. So how do you go about finding the right candidate? Now, is this a position that you've, uh, you've never had in your business before? But now you're growing um, and you need it. But do you know like other businesses that have this position and you know what it looks like? And oh, well, there's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess you can, yeah. You, you, you can go ask other businesses. Yeah, I would, I would find either friends or colleagues, people that I know that have already filled that position. Yeah. Maybe go hang out there for a week and just see how they interact and how it works with all the other pieces. That way I have a better understanding of what I'm looking for. Um, but when I, whenever I hire anybody, um, the two things that I look for is before they even come in for an interview is one, can they follow instructions? And two, is, do they have a sense of urgency? Can they meet deadlines? Because if, if you have a problem with those two, it doesn't matter how skilled they are, it's never going to be a good fit. Yep. So try to, you know, try to put those types of things into the application process to eliminate, uh, you know, right off the bat. Um, the other thing is when I already have a team and we're adding to the team, I'm not going to be working with that person all day long. So I let you know the people that have been with me the longest decide. They, they, once they meet all the other criteria, and it just comes down to you know equal skill versus equal skill, it comes down to personality, and if they're actually a good fit for the culture and for the team. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, on to uh, the next segment, the Would You Rather segment. Awesome. So this is a little fun little game that we're going to play. It's going to. I got six Would You Rather's, and you just say which one you would. Uh, which one you would rather and why. All right. So it's going to rattle, you know, just go right through them. So the first one, would you rather start a business broke and build your empire or start a business with an investor and share your empire? I would rather start my business broke and build my empire. Why? Uh, because that's what I've done and I believe you learn a lot more lessons when you go through the trials of pain and not having money when you're starting an empire or trying to build an empire puts you through a lot of growing pains. Awesome. Time travel or read minds? Which one would you rather? Oh, my gut says time travel. Time travel. Can I go is, uh, forward tricky. and back? Forward and back? Yeah. Time travel for sure. Why is that? Oh, dude, like all the great moments, and I, I can go back in history and look at all the great moments that I had and go, huh, that was pretty cool. Like you can re instead of memory, just go re-experience it. But then I'd go forward and see, like, not so much what's coming <laughs> up in my life, but hey, what what disasters could I help uh, avoid? Time travel is tricky stuff, though. You can go back and make one change and True. change the course of everything. Isn't that how the Highlander? Was that the Highlander? There's a show that had to do with time travel. Yeah. I don't know if it was the Highlander. <laughs> but yeah, that's exactly what would happen. I'd be the one that fucks it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Would you rather try out for Dancing with, with the Stars or Cake Boss? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. You have some good dance moves we don't know about? I do. I got this one. I got this. No, uh, I would do dancing. I did see the daughter-daughter the, the daddy dance you know, moves, <laughs> yeah. so you do have some moves. Yeah, yeah, I got some moves. I, I would, I would want to do the uh, Dancing with the Stars. I'll, do, I'll, I'll go for Cake Boss because, you know, I can... Can eat. you bake? No, but I can eat cake. Okay. That's a good start. <laughs> would you rather be out of shape and rich or in shape and poor? In shape and poor. Yeah. I would have to go with that as well. Yeah. And why is that? I, I think the greatest wealth you have is your health. For sure. Yeah, money's great, but uh, I actually did a talk last year at an event. There was 44 people. Together, they controlled $400 million, right? So these are very high net worth individuals. Three of the four, 44 people uh, had oxygen bottles, and they weren't like in their 90s. Like, that they were just so- in uh, Vancouver? Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Had like oxygen tanks that were dragging around and really out of shape, and you can just tell that they had the money, but the money was gonna solve one might argue, well, they can go get a personal trainer, nutrition coach. They got to solve the issues here in their head first. Yeah, I don't want to be that guy. Awesome. So you might know why Chelsea, she picked these questions. The next one, would you rather be a falcon or a hawk? I know there's something there, but uh, um, I don't know what the difference is necessarily. But Yeah, I didn't know the difference either. <laughs> I'm going to say a hawk. Wait a minute. No, when I was in UK last year, I learned that falcons are very smart. I'm gonna, I'd rather be a falcon. Falcon, because yes. they're smart. Yes. Also, last one. Would you rather be a New York Times best-selling author or a member of Oprah's book club? As in my book would be... In her book club. In, like, oh, yeah. Oprah's book club, for sure. Over New York Times? Nice. Oh, yeah. Why is that? Bigger impact. Is it harder to get into that? Yeah. Not I, all New York Times sellers make it into her book club. Exactly. Not exactly right. Not all but New York Times. Are all the books in her book club New York Times bestsellers? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but what I do know is the books that are in her book club have wider reach, right? And at the end of the day, with my book, I just want bigger reach. Yep. And so I'm always after impact. The income is a byproduct. Although it would be cool to say I'm a New York Times bestselling author because what are you going to say? I'm part of Oprah's book club, but 
where impact is concerned, it's there. All right, I got some questions for you. Ready? All right. Would you rather lose all of your money and valuables or all of your pictures that you've ever taken? It's a tough one. And uh, I would probably say all the money and valuables because I know I have the skills like we talked about last week to make it back. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, pictures, you know, we still have the memories and stuff, so that wouldn't be, you know, end of the world either. We could always go make new memories and we still have the old ones. Um, but, but I mean, we take such amazing pictures and videos these days with, you know, with our little... Yeah, we have our whole timeline on right? Facebook that our kids can go when they get older and just yeah. search through and see what their life was like. So I'm going to go with losing all of my money and valuables because I have the skills to make it back. All right. Would you rather go to jail for four years for something you didn't do or get away with something horrible that you did do but live with the fear of being caught? I'm going to go with going to jail for four years for something that I didn't do because doing something horrible and living with it forever is longer than four years and it's just going to eat at you yeah. until forever. That's like forever. a life sentence. So, That's, that was the exact way um, I, I thought of it too. Awesome. All right. Would you rather be poor and uh, work a job you love or be rich and work a job you hate? I'd rather be poor and work at a job you know that I love and um, you know I mean depending on how poor that is if it's poor where my family is suffering then uh, maybe I'll work at a job I hate but if it's poor like you know uh, you know they're still getting fed and um, have a roof, roof over their head yeah. then I think I would rather be poor because I could you know love them up and spend more quality time and love my yeah. job and not be you know, stressed out and miserable from working at a job that I don't like. I concur. I concur. That's probably a good lesson for a lot of people watching right now as well. You might want to consider that. Uh, here's another one for you. Would you rather take a guaranteed $1 million or have a chance at $10 million, but it's 50-50? I would uh, take the guaranteed $1 million because with a million, I can make way more than $10 million with it. Mm. So. Mm -mm -mm. Can you expand on that? That's a good, great lesson. Yeah, so with a million dollars, I could probably fund... 10 different companies and the two or three of them make it, I'm going to be, make way more than $10 million over time, whereas 50-50 chance you might end up with nothing. Right, right. Very so. well said. All right, uh, next one. Uh, would you rather work more hours per day but fewer days or fewer hours per day but more days? Fewer hours per day but more days because that's what I do now and I love it and it gives me more freedom because I don't actually always have to be here to work. You know, as you know, we can work pretty much from anywhere. Yep. We come in when we have to. but. Uh, I would say fewer hours per day, but more days. Okay. Last question for you. Would you rather have a family of 12 children or never be able to have children at all? If those were your only two options, you get 12 or none? I'm going to go with 12 because now I'm in a, you know, in a position to be able to take care of all of them. If I couldn't support them, then I would go with none. But since I am in a position where I could take care of 12, I would go with 12. Cool. They, uh, they, dude, you'd, once they're of age, you would have like a whole sales force. <laughs> like I always look at it that way when I think about it. Dan Ritchie and Cody Sipe, like when their kids are all <laughs> 18 and over, like they're going to have a hell of an army. Of Basketball team, yeah. baseball team. Yeah, exactly. We have Dr. Levin, so he can figure it out for you. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to bring him here every day, <laughs> drop him off, and then go surf. Right, London, take care of these 11. <laughs> awesome. Next up is what's trending. So just scrolling through Facebook and just seeing what people are talking about, we came across some uh, pretty interesting uh, topics and articles, videos. So this first one, I don't know if you've seen like the different gym apparatuses that have uh -huh. come out. There was before this one, um, was, there was like remember they had shake weight, but the follow up was like the squat magic. Yes, that's been going on. Yeah, I, I saw but the I'm squat not talking magic. about this one. This one is almost it's really controversial, and uh, I know how I feel about it. But the people, some of the comments do make a little bit of sense. So this thing's called a gym pole. You screw Whoa. this thing into the ground. And you do these pole fitness exercises. Bad, on there. bad, very bad. I, I can already tell by the picture this is bad. And they're teaching kids to do this stuff. And it's there, you know, they've applied to be a gym, an Olympic sport. Listen, I'm all good for two, two guys being on a pole, and I mean that in every way possible, Chanta. Um, but, but I, have, I have a video of him on the pole, him and Ahmed. I've seen that video. I've seen that, two guys on a pole. There you go. Two, in Mexico. Two of our friends, friends in Mexico on a pole. But I think every dad on the planet would agree with me. Our sole mission, if we have a daughter, is to keep that's our daughter what, off the pole. That's exactly what I told him. That's how I judge being a successful dad or not. Mm -hmm. At least that's how I used to. Yeah, yeah it, ain't, it ain't the money. Success is if my daughter's not on the pole. Yeah. But some of the... Um, Arguments. Oh so God. some people were like calling the people who posted the video pervs because the kids on there wearing you know you know skimpy clothes or whatnot. And then the people that posted videos said the people that said that were pervs for looking at the kids that way that it's a sport. And in, uh, they've actually applied to be an Olympic sport. It says part of rhythmic gymnastics. Yeah. But I always thought the 
pole was horizontal in gymnastics, but yeah, the um, vertical pole. That's, <laughs> that's, that's that's never a good thing. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree, but the uh, wow, it was actually split, and there was another uh, comment that a CrossFitter actually made. I guess is, is either his wife or girlfriend must do like pole fitness, but was saying that Facebook is actually censoring some of these uh, posts about the pole fitness and yeah. kids stuff. Well, here's a true story for you real quick. When, uh, was it 2013 or 2014, when I did, uh, did that uh, gym rescue show on Spike TV, one of the gyms that we interviewed, they didn't end up making it on the show and so we never refabbed their business, but one of them was a pole dancing gym. <laughs> and I was blown away. I, I, I give them all credit, like the stuff that the guys and gals were doing in there, because we went and interviewed all of them, they, they were in Miami. They're highly skilled. Dude, highly skilled, <laughs> highly skilled. But there's no way, and holy hell, I'm screwing one of those doggone things on my lawn for my daughter to get around, period. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. So yeah. recently, not, not so recently now, I guess, uh, you've given up Diet Coke. Yeah, it's been about five months, yeah. And um, I've given it, given it up in the past, but I always come back to it, and now yeah. I'm, I finally found you know, an article that tells me that I'm okay, because. Everybody's telling me it's poison, it's gonna kill you. Yeah, what yeah. do they know? Well, aspartame kill you, no dumbass, here's why. So I found this awesome article to, that lets me feel good about drinking Diet Coke. Okay. And um, so they did this study with rats and they were feeding rats like, if you should keep scrolling, something crazy like 2,000 milligrams of uh, aspartame a day. Mm. And they found a higher number of uh, rats with leukemia and lymphoma that were giving, well, I guess it was 5,000 milligrams wow. a day. All right, so unless you're like really chowing down on the aspartame, like you're, you're saying well, that you're gonna be good. One can of Coke is 183 or 187 milligrams of aspartame. So it'd be like the equivalent of like 10 cans of Coke a day, which I don't do 10, mm. but uh, we have friends that do like six. Yeah. I might be three. Yeah, in fact, day. so uh, a, a few months ago, <laughs> I was at a Joe Polish's Genius Network meeting and Bill Phillips was there, right? The Body for Life guy. And the dude drinks six cans of Diet Coke a day. And he said, <laughs> his true words, he goes, if six cans of Diet Coke a day are what's gonna kill me, I'm all for it. Uh, he goes, otherwise I live a healthy life. And he does, he's, he's fit and he's got low stress. But um, nevertheless, I just quit it because, I don't know, I started to go down the slippery slope of one, then two, then three a day. Hey, I'm there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know there's people who are just disciplined and will just drink one. That's not me. Yet. Uh, yeah. Jessica does that. She only drinks one on the weekend. That's yeah. It. And if I could do that, I'd be all for it. But if I, I only did that. It, if I don't drink it for like a week, I don't like the way it tastes. Yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't just do one on the weekend. Yeah. Now, I mean, since you're going to be drinking it, I highly recommend putting some Malibu rum in there. It takes it to a whole new level. A whole new level. Nice. Yeah. So one of the other things I keep seeing all over Facebook right. is the uh, gift comments feature that they. It started uh, off with like just names. Hey. Write your name as a gift and see what comes up. And then it was, you know, tell me what you do for a living through a gift comment. Um, or tell me what you think about our president through a gift comment. <laughs> so uh, I thought it'd be fun if we just did a comment where we put our names in and just see what comes up. Oh, yeah. This is one of the things that have been trending on Facebook uh, huh. lately. So we'll start with Bedros and see what, uh, I'm not seeing a gift. Oh, I, I, this is your fan page. Yeah, you have to go it, to a it personal. It has to be a personal page. There we go. There we go. All right, so we're gonna type in Bedros uh -huh. and see Bedros. Yeah. You have one Whoa. now. Whoa! <laughs> I did this last week and nothing came up. So Whoa. somebody's been adding gifts of your name All right. in the last so week. Kim, is that Kim Kardashian? Yeah. <laughs> She's been thinking of you. <laughs> see Armenian hookup, you see There's that? There's like a bunch of them now, because we were gonna have to go back to Bedro and there was some. Holy cow. There were some guys, yeah, with their dance. <laughs> Hey, can you do that? <laughs> that is slick, man. Wow. What comes up nice. when you put your name? I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Mm. My name is Jeff. See, you get all the cool <laughs> shit. There is a good, there's one that we saw that was kind of, I, get, I think they uh, redid the algorithm. Is it? <laughs> Huh. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome, but I don't, right. really, I don't really like this feature. I wish they, uh, they would get rid of yeah. it. It's kind of annoying. I think that Facebook, I think, I think Lennon just said it, it's becoming Tumblr because of this and then the colorful little background. Like, just get rid of that so we can communicate. Yeah, they're just trying to, like, 
take all the features that people like of other yeah. platforms and just steal them and you know keep people on their platform. Dude, they're dumbifying people, honestly. Yeah. Like, whatever happened to like writing words and then reading words? Now it's like, <laughs> oh, I see a picture. Okay, I, that's how much you must feel is how that picture is. Come on, man. <laughs> Write words, read words. Get your brain to work out a little. All right, whatever. Awesome. Coffee and cocaine with Bedros. That's right. And Jeff. <laughs> Mainly Jeff, the cocaine part. I'm just the coffee. All right, with all the shark sightings still that still happening, mm -hmm. um, we have also had our own unicorn sighting again. We did. Uh, so this week, our unicorn of the week is none other than Brian Stecker with Boomer Fitness in yeah, uh, yeah. Vancouver, Washington. So this guy is probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Um, maybe like a couple years ago, he comes to me and asks if I was in the House of Pain and basic training in the Air Force. And I thought it was the weirdest question. I was like, uh, yeah, how do you know? He's like, I was one week behind you. You were like my, you know, senior flight or father flight. Because like when the people come in behind you, after you get abused from the people that are a week ahead of you, you get to go and teach them the ropes. Mm. You know, as far as like yeah. how to iron their clothes and make their beds. And we get to treat them like crap. So you actually <laughs> probably hazed him and didn't even realize it. But he remembered me, but I didn't remember how him. How many years ago was this? At least, well, it was in 96. Holy so, crap, 20 years and ago. And I think it was like 2012. Maybe 2012, 2011, when he came up to me and, wow. and uh, realized that he, he, he knew me. What from a small world. And now, like, we're friends. So. And, and <laughs> Whoa. That's and, uh, yeah, he's crushing it with, in the boomer yeah. space. And, um, and by the way, this guy is one of the most generous, giving guys, super humble. And when you give him a marching order, I should tell you this about Brian Stecker. He's just like, he's like the Terminator. He just locks on and does. And as of January, he's been putting up something like three videos a week on YouTube. And the numbers just keep growing. He's getting a bigger opt-in list, selling more of his info product, and his gym in Vancouver, Washington is growing. I mean, it's 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 nuts what he does. Yeah, when it comes to coaching clients, I always say like, you know, military, you know, veterans, athletes are the best because they're just conditioned yep. not to come up with a game plan, but to execute. And they don't question the game plan. In the military, you don't ever question orders. You so if it's an order, you just go and just do, do it. it. Put your head down and, and go do it. And whatever the outcome is, the outcome is, and then you make adjustments. Same thing, uh, you know, for football players, you know, basketball players. The coach gives them the game plan. They go out and execute. They get their ass kicked at halftime. They come in. The coach gives them the new, ex you know, a new plan. So uh, I love coaching uh, athletes and, and military vets. Uh, make my job easy. Yeah, yeah, he's a stud, man. Congratulations, Brian. Yeah, Brian. Well, awesome. Right. That is it for this week. So thank you everyone for joining us, and we'll be on again next week. Bye, folks. <laughs>